This story is top secret. Most of my team won't even know about this story until after it goes live, when you all see it. We flew out to EVGA's California headquarters for a closed doors meeting with EVGA CEO Andrew Hent, and here's what he had to say about NVIDIA. We are not going to be on NVIDIA CEO Jensen's lap on stage, so I don't want people to speculate what's going on when we're not there. EVJ has decided to not carry the next gen. EVJ is continuing the current product line. We will continue the current gen until we run out. And this video marks the beginnings of a historic shift in the video card industry at large. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Height Y60. The Height Y60 is one of the most unique cases to launch anytime recently, coming in multiple color options like this bright red, and it's also built for both water cooling and air cooling. The case pays extreme attention to detail, particularly with cable management paths like you can see with the quality rubber grommets that are always passed through, and with split lower and upper chambers. Learn more at the link in the description below. NVIDIA comprises 80% of EVGA's revenue, so this change could mark the beginnings of a long and drawn out demise for the company if it doesn't navigate these next few months carefully. It could also mark, however, the beginnings of something new, a less stressful and more mobile organization where they're freed from the binds of their encumbering partner, NVIDIA. EVGA CEO felt restrained by NVIDIA. I commented to him that this decision must be hard for you. And he said, this, this is easy. Working with Nvidia was hard. Strong words for Nvidia. We'd hope though, for the sake of EVGA's employees, that the decision might have been a little bit harder. But it didn't stop there. The company wouldn't even entertain the idea of working with Intel or AMD when we asked. And we pushed the point. And after asking repeatedly, why EVGA wouldn't make someone else's board, we asked the obvious. Does EVGA intend to return to NVIDIA for the 50 series? No. They're done, Han said, and they're done with all video cards while he remains CEO. Existing customers will continue to get support, and EVGA is withholding some boards as RMA replacements and for warranties. But once they sell through inventory this year, that's it. No more EVGA video cards. Oh, EVGA has made a lot of cards over the years, so this is a big change. They built their company on the back of cards like these for decades now. And as for Intel and AMD as potential partners, that's a different story entirely. Let's start with the relevant facts from our information gathering before we get to the fascinating part of the story that describes the downfall of the relationship as it was torn asunder between NVIDIA and EVGA. Starting with those facts, EVGA will cease all production of manufacturing for video cards. Existing customers will remain supported, EVGA tells us, by EVGA's warranties, by its normal processes. So that remains in place. EVGA has withheld some inventory as well. This is intended to help it hold over as it might need to replace cards that get lost in the mail, get damaged, need replacements or have defects where uh, they need to resolve it somehow for the customer. They're keeping some back and not selling them for those purposes. Next one, they're expecting to run out of the 30 series by the end of this year. EVJ is staying in business, at least for now. This is one of the points. They made it very clear to us that they're financially sound and stable and have no intent of going out of business. Uh, and it, it will trigger a downsizing, but at least as of today, EVJ is staying in business. EVJ is not selling its business and it actually has very strong convictions against that. So that's not something you need to worry about either necessarily, but it's something we're gonna talk about more later as well. Now, also interesting here, EVJ is not expanding into more product categories. So even though it's not selling the business and it is killing its video card arm of the business, which again is 80% of the revenue, even though the profit is smaller uh, overall, the lack of expansion is a little concerning because it means there's a lot of employees who will not have a thing to do anymore. Now, uh, NVIDIA was notified of EVGA's decision to stop making video cards 
back in April, but only the absolute upper echelon of management is aware of this decision. So a lot of NVIDIA staff will be finding out when this video goes up. Another point from the information gathering stages where this was all conducted with EVJ CEO, this is as first party as it gets, not rumors. Uh, EVJ has thus far not entertained the idea of working with Intel or AMD. We talked with them about this at great length for over an hour in that conversation, and uh, there was just no interest from EVJ CEO. However, we really do think there's an opportunity there and they should be exploring it. But as of now, that's what they told us. Uh, EVJ, again, finished making EBT samples of the 40 series cards. They will not be selling them though. The reason we're bringing this up is because if you see photos leak online of EVJ RTX 4090s, then it's because they made some. I can't say a lot more than that because that product is under NDA, uh, but they made some and they're not gonna be selling them. If you see a leak though, it's an engineering sample. It doesn't mean that this video is invalid. This decision is very real. It came from the CEO. Uh, EVJ claims that employees will be reallocated to other departments of EVGA. And realistically, there is going to be some kind of mass exodus because it's just impossible to take. There's about 280 people there right now worldwide, as we understand it. They've already laid off 20% of their Taiwan workforce a couple months ago. And it's just not possible to get rid of that much of your business and be able to give everyone a new job within the company. It's not that big of a company. And some people will be left without a job function. And although EVJ CEO says that he will take care of his team and keep paying them to some extent, we believe that realistically, if people don't have a thing to do, even if they're okay accepting charity for a while, at some point they're gonna go, I would like to do something now for the money, thank you, and leave and go somewhere else. So for instance, people like Kingpin, or Vince Lucido, who's on the overclocking team and is a marketing machine for EVGA, it will no longer be able to do the job he was hired to do, and that's gonna be true for a lot of other people on the team as well. So there will likely be some departures. There is going to be some attrition, uh, even though EVJ intends to support its staff. And finally, EVGA's belief is that NVIDIA has screwed it over, basically. So this is where we're gonna approach it in sort of a neutral uh, or objective way because some of the stuff from EVGA first party doesn't quite make sense, uh, but also we've heard many of these things about NVIDIA in the past and they align with things that we know uh, for NVIDIA's treatment of partners. So there's some truth and there's also some flavor from EVGA because they were the ones controlling the dissemination of the information for this. So let's talk about EVGA's side of the story. We asked, why would you walk away from NVIDIA? And the answer was that it's about respect. In talking to EVGA, the company told us point blank, this is not a financial decision. It is a principled decision. EVGA and competing board partners have told us in nearly every launch that they don't find out basics about the very product they're partnered to sell, like the MSRP, until NVIDIA CEO is on stage. We're told this is true even for cost to buy the chip. NVIDIA apparently only gives placeholder costs for some GPUs like flagships until the MSRP is revealed publicly. It's hard to run a business when you don't even know what the cost of your product is that you're imminently launching. We've learned that NVIDIA has both a floor and a ceiling for card prices on some cards, so only flagships for the ceiling, with board partners restricted from selling flagship models above a certain cost. This restricts creativity for uniquely high-end boards. But those are the rules of the game, and other board partners are willing to work within them. So if EVGA doesn't want to play by those rules anymore and they exit the market, the other board partners are going to descend like vultures upon the allocation that EVGA gets from NVIDIA. And although EVGA insisted to us that uh, being an NVIDIA partner is not ultimately profitable, clearly it's profitable enough for the companies that sell many millions upon millions of video cards uh, each generation. So even though Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI have all had the same complaints to us about how NVIDIA sort of treats them or supplies them with information before a launch, they all seem to be doing at least well enough to keep selling the cards and not want to back away from it. And ultimately, a couple percent margin, although absolutely terrible, 
uh, against millions of products, it starts to add up fast. So we knew there was a lot more to this story and we would have to dig into it. NVIDIA won't sell fewer GPUs because of this. So losing the EVGA, maybe they lose some coverage in some parts of the world, but this isn't really about sales here. It's more about a statement for EVGA and losing a partner of 20 plus years that's been exclusive to NVIDIA here this entire time. That sends one hell of a statement. But it doesn't only send a statement about NVIDIA. EVGA feels its supplier, NVIDIA, is undercutting EVGA's ability to sell products with NVIDIA parts by offering the Founders Edition cards at a lower price, which it can do because NVIDIA makes both the GPU and the card. They don't need to take the margin off the GPU in the same way. Looking at Best Buy's website right now, we see the Founders Edition cards are cheaper than EVGA video cards. EVGA can't compete here, and it's already losing money on its 30 series cards at these prices, whereas NVIDIA stands to profit regardless because it is both the supplier and the manufacturer of the board and sometimes even the seller of it. So we put this table together. We have some specific number values, but we can't share those with you yet possibly in December, we're hoping to do a follow-up. But talking to EVGA, we've learned that the company is losing hundreds of dollars per video card when selling at the current market prices. Lower tier cards like the 3060 are still profitable, but everything from an RTX 3080 to a 3090 Ti is a loss in the hundreds of dollars. And the prices are controlled in part by Nvidia. And the problem here for EVGA is they don't wanna make boards that are substandard that have thermal issues, power design issues, or other problems. And that means costing more. And since they aren't the supplier, they can't run as low as NVIDIA can. We asked EVGA if it tried to work this out with NVIDIA before killing the partnership that they've had. And EVGA's Joe Darwin, basically head of operations, answered with this. You can only ask so many times. We tried to have the discussion with them. Andrew Han jumped in and said, they know. So it's done then. They're not making more video cards. Now, EVGA only had three people from the company in the meeting with us, and its staff won't be finding out about this decision until today, when this video goes live just a few hours before it. And so as interesting as the story is about EVGA and NVIDIA, uh, the one thing that we were worried about here, maybe more immediately, is what happens to EVGA's people as a result of this decision. But trying to figure out what happens next for the staff at EVGA, we started asking about the revenue numbers. About 78% of EVGA's gross revenue comes from video cards right now today. About 20% comes from power supplies. About 2%, the remainder, comes from miscellaneous things. So that'd be motherboards, the E1, coolers, things of that nature. And EVGA CEO claims that the power supply margin, profit margin, for its power supplies is 300% higher than the profit margin for its GPUs or its video cards. So that's how you end up with the company that has 78% of its revenue, but a really comparatively small portion of its profit coming from one division. Uh, and it's also how you end up in the conundrum EVGA is now in, where it will no longer have sufficient revenue or work, more importantly, it's really the work that matters more, to sustain 280 people, most of whom work on video cards, when there will no longer be video cards being manufactured at the company. So I asked if there would be layoffs, and EVGA's Joe Darwin jumped in and said, we're not going to lay anyone off. And that was the direct quote. He noted that they expect some attrition or basically some bleed of employees as they are informed of this news likely today and start deciding if they still want to work on the projects that they, well, if they still want to work there now that their projects are dead, basically. And we also know that they already had layoffs a few months ago in the Taiwan office. So a lot of EVGA staff is only there for GPUs and the numbers just don't make sense. We're, EVGA will not need all the PCB engineers who worked in the video card department to move over to power supplies, even though they're trying to create roles for them there. There's only so many power supply PCB designers you need, and the skills might not always line up. Additionally, the support staff won't have as many customers to support after this year. And even starting now, the amount of people who call in for help, it's going to go down. And the support staff, sure, you can retrain them on power supplies, but you only need so many people supporting power supplies, especially if you're not trying to grow that division of the business. Uh, further still, logistics, warehousing, and sales staff will now not be managing video card inventory anymore. Those jobs 
they're not going to stay. There's nothing for them to do. So it, it's a reality of this business where those roles will get cut if they don't have work. And even Jay, sure, the CEO says he will pay uh, and support his staff and try to keep them all employed. And that is fantastic and admirable and, and sort of the right thing to do. But they also can't pay on charity and lose money because then everyone will lose their jobs. So at some point, they either need to rely on attrition where people just depart, or they're going to have to really work on retraining and distributing people throughout the company and growing new business sectors uh, because sustaining will not be enough. So anyway, our next question was, what about Vince? EVJ relocated its resident overclocking expert and marketing machine, Vince Kainpin Lucido, to Taiwan about 10 years ago now. He's done well here, but he's entirely focused on overclocking and mostly GPUs and getting EVGA's name to the top of all of the charts. Without GPUs and with motherboards functionally dead in the water at EVGA, Vince will have little to do. EVJ CEO Andrew Han's answer was, I think Vince has his own plan. And my answer to that was you should check with them because I'm not so sure about that. I had just spoken to him recently. Uh, so that's for them to work out. But Han says he will take care of his people. We do believe he'll take care of at least a couple of the core people who have been at the company forever. Um, it, it will just come down to is there a provision of interesting work or is it just pay for sake of loyalty, which is, again, admirable. That's really a great thing to do that you don't have to and not many companies would do it. But normally people do want meaningful work to go along with that. So it just depends on how they work that out. So earlier we said that EVGA made some conflicting statements. What we've tried to make clear to really everyone in the industry, but especially in this situation EVGA, is that our job is to be as in the middle as possible and try to understand NVIDIA's perspective and EVGA's perspective. We're not the EVGA PR machine to just try and tell their story. And so looking at the story, we did find quite a few holes in it as it was developing. They started to congeal and, and re reclose as we got through more details, but we'll get to that. So EVJ's complaints about NVIDIA we think are valid. So uh, complaints about not receiving information prior to Jensen Huang getting on stage and announcing the parts, that's a little ridiculous and uh, it is a problem. So that is a, absolutely a valid complaint. Now, similarly, EVJ is not free of fault itself over these last couple of generations. Uh, the company, we think, is probably over-ordering during mining booms especially, and it gets burned when that demand dries up and it evaporates in a heartbeat, as you all know, literally days ago, maybe even one day ago, when this video went up, Ethereum went off of proof of work and like that, there's GPU supply again for really cheap. And that hurts companies like EVGA who have new inventory they want to sell as they compete with things half the price on eBay and a lot of them. So EVGA insists that it is solvent, that it has strong financial footing, and that it has liquidity that it has built up over the last year or so during this really high demand period where it's been able to sell everything it makes up until now. It also emphasized it has no debts and it owns its buildings, which is a great place to be in. But they got burned like this in the RTX 20 series as well. And this seems to be history repeating itself, where EVGA with the 20 series lost a lot of money in, in six digits at least for the 20 series towards the end of it. And it's like that again now where there's oversupply of a previous generation leading to a trigger of losses on sales towards the end of the generation's lifespan. Probably over the span of the 30 series, it was in demand for so long, it sounds like they did well. <laughs> it sounds like they're still okay, they've got liquidity, they have cash, but it's these last few months of the 30 series where whatever is left that they're selling at a loss, that's gonna start chewing away at the profit they've been trying to bank for years now. Uh, and depending on how much there is, it could be a bad situation to be in. So we kept asking questions and digging here. Now, while I can respect principal decisions, and I think you all know this because you've seen our content, you know how we'll take a stand on principle alone sometimes and torch ad contracts in, in a heartbeat. Uh, there is another point where different principles 
take priority over the original ones that you're acting on. In this case, what I'm talking about is EVJ's staff and its employees where they might really should take priority when making a decision that will affect the jobs at the company. So we felt like there had to be more to this decision. And EVJ CEO, he's in his early 60s now. Uh, retirement might make sense. The first card he made came out about 22 years ago. And he was among the first people making NVIDIA board partner cards. So because this decision felt like I had holes in it, I'd switched to Andrew Han's native language to try and connect a little bit better for an answer. And the question was very simple. Just Andrew, the Yao Yao Tui Xiao, Yao Tui Xiao Ma. And he said, Bu Yao Tui Xiao, not yet. Looking at the exterior of the building, you could see where there's another avenue here. And the whole flight out to EVGA, this question was burning in the back of my mind, which was, again, speaking in Mandarin with him. Which is just, do you want to sell? And his answer was very simple, very straightforward, no. At least he said he doesn't want to sell to the types of investors he thinks would take over. Han made it very clear that anyone who'd want to buy would be in it for the money, of course, because they're investors. And our interpretation of his side of this conversation was as if he'd rather die with the company than sell it to vultures who would tarnish the reputation EVGA had built and who would hurt the customers, which they have very uh, clearly, at least for the US market, been dedicated to. In fact, he said as much when he said that they were built on community and they didn't want to sell to people who would take that away from the core of the company. So it's very respectable. But he also noted that there may be people within the ranks of EVGA who could eventually take over if it ever comes to retirement for the current CEO. And he would move into more of an advisory role at that point. Who knows? It could be that if that happens in some years, someone internally takes over and decides, I am willing to deal with the time it takes to deal with NVIDIA's bullshit uh, or AMD's or Intel's, they all do it. Uh, and I'm willing to put video cards back on the map for EVGA. Time will tell, we're not there yet. For now though, Andrew Han doesn't want to retire, although we eventually learned that there's another reason for the termination of this partnership with NVIDIA, and it's family. Andrew Han told us that he's been running the company for decades now, he wants to spend more time with his family at this point, and uh, he feels that NVIDIA's lack of appreciation of his company's work is no longer worth the time that NVIDIA requires to participate in launching of its GPUs. So that, when we finally got to that answer, it made a lot more sense because up until then, purely numerically, financially, potentially even ethically at some level for the other employees, it was difficult for us to understand the decision at the core. But with this information, it became clear that it's more of a personal decision. It's not just a personal, uh, principle or some kind of vendetta against NVIDIA, it's also a desire for time in life outside of the GPU industry. And EVGA uh, has told us in the past that it feels NVIDIA is vindictive, and that's coming from the number one partner. How this decision ripples through the rest of the partners remains to be seen. As for AMD and Intel, when we pressed for over an hour on the topic of whether EVGA would partner with AMD or Intel, we were met with a confusing answer. EVGA told us about how apparently NVIDIA has fought it over its overclocking products and high-end products and made it difficult for EVGA to be creative with what they want to make. They've also told us how they've been yelled at at press functions for allowing the press, that's us, to film certain things because NVIDIA didn't fully control those things at the time. In spite of all these bad experiences, EVGA still has no plans to work with AMD or Intel. And uh, the reasoning, again, was, was confusing and contradictory, probably ultimately because there was some personal decision-making fueling it. But one of the statements made was, quote, because of the partnership, at least I don't betray them, talking about NVIDIA. Obviously, everyone in the room, that's me, Jay, and John Petty uh, looked at Andrew Han and said, but it seems like you think they betrayed you, so who cares? 
We made the point that Intel needs a strong and competent board partner right now, and that UVGA could add disproportionate value with its experience to Intel's endeavors. The response was, quote, that's Intel's problem. Actually, GPU business is a good business. NVIDIA has a good product. So as of now, UVGA doesn't want to work with Intel. That could change if the right people at Intel reach out to EVGA and can get through to them. But the longer EVGA stays out of the video card market, the more their relevance will fade. If they come back in four years and say, we're ready to go again, that value is not going to be the same as it is right now. Right now, AMD or Intel would kill to have EVGA working with them on products, and EVGA could demand better pricing and a higher margin because of their position. But that's going to go away if they don't move fast. Uh, so EVJ has some strong points here, kind of wrapping up things. You know, by all accounts from board partners, NVIDIA is on the overbearing side at times. And NVIDIA has kind of moved towards a closed ecosystem, but it's not there yet. We could see evidence maybe of NVIDIA wanting to do an Apple-like approach where it's the only provider of its GPUs. It sells them in Founders Editions. That's the only model. But they're lacking a lot of the localization, the logistics globally, the control of the supply chain to make that possible today. We spoke with someone from NVIDIA and uh, basically asked for some flavor as to how does Jensen, Juan, and NVIDIA, how do they think and operate? This was the quote we got. Jensen likes well-integrated and fully controlled vertical solutions. He'll ask, why are these guys, the board partners, making money when they're not doing much? NVIDIA's problem is it doesn't control the supply chain like Apple does. They can lose money on a board where Apple won't. Apple is run by a supply chain guy with other supply chain staff living in Taiwan and China doing nothing but sourcing. This aligns with what EVJ CEO told us, which was that Jensen Huan, he feels, treats partners as if they have zero contribution and no cost with all the PCB, the heatsink design, the fan design, the tuning, overclock functionality and software. Uh, his feeling was that this is not appreciated by NVIDIA CEO. Um, so NVIDIA may eventually endeavor to make cards independently, but as of now, NVIDIA still needs and seems to want to work with board partners to do all of the hard stuff down the chain, like support, supply chain management, and all of that stuff. Uh, so we've tried to take as balanced a view as possible here. Hopefully it's coming through because this was not easy to write. It took several, it took about a week actually to really refine it. And it's easy to try and build on the conflict and on the hate for NVIDIA. But we also want to point out that EVJ controlled the distribution of this story from its perspective. And so that's why we tried to tried to take it as neutrally as possible. We could see both sides a little bit. By and large, there's evidence to support that NVIDIA acts in a very controlling fashion with its partners. Probably NVIDIA's defense would be, yeah, but they'd screw it up, or do you see all the leaks that happen, or something like that. So certainly there's a defense. We do see it a little more on the partner side for that aspect of things, though, where you know, they, they deserve respect for cooling the GPUs that NVIDIA is making right now. That's not easy. That's a lot of work, and it's really expensive. It deserves respect. It's not like they're just doing nothing, uh, adding no value, and making money off of NVIDIA's hard work. It goes both ways. Both parties are putting in a lot of hard work. So anyway, EVGA's CEO, we spoke to him, and you know, we do think they made some questionable purchasing decisions over the last two generations, so they're not fully clean of fault um, for perhaps some of the stress that they felt, and I think they recognize that. But his, the CEO said that he feels relief and as if sort of a weight has been lifted, uh, and so we can respect the principal decisions there. The, Personal reasoning also makes sense. I worry about the staff a little bit. Um, most companies would appoint someone to head up growth elsewhere if the CEO doesn't wish to. You don't have to kick them out. It's a private company, but they would normally appoint someone. So EVGA now needs to prove itself. This either is the beginning of the end for the company and it's only going to get worse, or they will now be completely unbound from these apparently caustic ties that have been restraining their innovation for however long. So uh, it's up to them to prove what happens next. And that is all for this report. Thank you for watching and for supporting our independent coverage.
and our efforts to fly around and get this stuff properly reported. We pay for all of our own flights, hotels, and everything else to do these trips and, uh, and collect the information for you. So you can support us at store.gamersnexus.net by grabbing a Mod Mad coaster pack or more, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.